I was working on a project for the Tanstack Start tutorial, but I had to stop. And the reason is, it's too powerful. This is the simple app I was building. You can see I can click the ongoing button, my avatar appears, and participants are now four. But let me reduce this window, and you're gonna see that everything happens real time. For example, I can show the comments on both windows. I can scroll down a little bit. And here, let's say I want to add a simple comment. Hey, I can send a comment and it is already synced on the other window. Same goes for hitting like and clicking the delete button. The thing is, I didn't have to write any kind of custom logic. It just works. The mistake I did here is to integrate convex with Tanstack query and Tanstack start. So let me show you a high level overview on how does this work. Everything begins from the delete button. That, by the way, it is only visible if you're the user that created the comment. Clicking the button will trigger on the delete comment that fired this mutation coming from this hook. So this is just wrapping to make code clean, but nothing really happened yet. We fired a function passing a parameter. The use delete comment mutation is once again a wrapper, again, that basically matches Tanstack query use mutation and Convex use convex mutation. That, as you can see from the imports, I'm using use convex mutation from convex and use mutation from Tasta query. So, once again, we're just showing wrappers and functions, so nothing happened yet. And if I click here, I directly jump into the actual mutation that works on the database. So, this is the backend logic, and that's really the only piece of logic I implemented. And just checks if the comment exists, the user exists and fires a delete action. So once again, apart from a couple of wrappers I've written here, I didn't really have to write any custom logic. But here you may wonder, how does data get revalidated? And that's as simple as that. This time I'm wrapping my API, not inside a use convex mutation, but inside a convex query. That is, once again, the two wrappers convex uses to work in combination with Tasta query. And in my component, you can see that this comment query is passed inside a use query, and with that, I magically have my comments array that I can pass down to the comments board component. And that's where our full circle closes. We're back at the component we started our journey with our delete comment mutation. And in short, this combination between Tansta query and convex passing through these two adapters also makes data invalidation transparent. Every time I send a mutation, convex tells Tansta query that there's something to revalidate. And just like that, data gets fetched again and you get the updated value. And you may wonder, where's the problem? Well, the integration between Tanstack Query, Tanstack Start, and Convex runs so smooth that you don't even have the chance to appreciate Tanstack Start's primitives. And my mistake was basically that I wanted to immediately start big, and I also integrated authentication with Clark. I can sign out, and I sign in again using my GitHub account. The reason is I didn't want to use local storage or make a dummy authentication system, but immediately wanted to use a real solution and I picked Clark. To be fair, the choice of using Clark and Convex wasn't entirely random. As you can see here, they are Tanstack partners, and for this reason, they already have a beta version of an adapter working so well with Tanstack Start. In particular, integrating both Clark and Convex basically required to add these two wrappers here when I create my Tanstack router with the query client, and I also had to write a function to make sure that Clark users were properly synced with the database on Convex. But again, this isn't code I had to write myself. You can find everything into the documentation of Clark and Convex. The thing is, now I should probably think about creating two different series on Tastack Start. One that is more focused on the low-level APIs and the primitives so that you can better understand what Tastack Start has to offer. And another one, maybe similar to this video, but going more in depth, showcasing how you can step by step integrate other technologies, as it could be Convex or Clark, but really any of the other tools you can find available online, how to integrate them with Tanstack Start, taking care of some aspects like authentication, giving you more time in working in your domain logic. Which series do you think I should do first? Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching this video. Bye!